I'm getting tired of these subscription-based cloud services, so I have a solution. This 128GB USB 3.0 flash drive should be enough for most people to replace all of their cloud services. Now this USB, I'm basically going to make it into my own home server since I'm not able to access my Wi-Fi router or anything because that comes through the people that I live with. Since I'm not able to do that, I'm not able to actually set up a home server, even make a computer for a home server that's able to run 24-7. So the next best thing that I thought I could do is upload everything that I own and have onto a USB. Every day I keep getting emails and messages, hey, upgrade your storage, upgrade your cloud storage, from whether that's from Apple, whether that's from Google or my computer for OneDrive, like I'm just tired of all the cloud service nonsense and subscription-based stuff. I really do not like that. So I'm going to make sure all of my media is on this 128 gigabyte USB stick. That includes all of my photos I've ever taken, all of my recordings, all of my files from my computer, as well as my phone. We're also going to be downloading some portable apps onto this USB stick as well, just to see what more it can do and just a little test because I want to be able to have certain applications no matter what computer I plug this USB stick into. I want to be able to access those applications and portable apps really help with that and make it doable. But anyways, let's get started. The first thing that I did was create a couple folders just because I didn't really know what I was going to put on this right at the start. I did end up adding a couple extra folders at the end and you'll see it throughout this video. But I created one for my phone and one for just basic photos as well as transferring over my folder for OneDrive. But within the photos folder, I was able to just go down month by month and just slowly but surely get every single month all the way up until 2018 because that was when I took like the earliest photos because that's when I first got my own phone but once it was done it was so nice to look at it and I know it will be very good to have this organization early on all of the portable apps that I'll be using in today's video will be coming from portableapps.com it has hundreds of portable apps that you can download to a USB device or even just your computer you can run any game portably and the apps vary from many categories from office, gaming, computer, coding, all sorts of things that you could need. The first application that I wanted to test today was GIMP. GIMP is a lightweight photo editor that is very similar to Photoshop and downloading it is pretty easy. It gives you an option of where you want to download it and you just click install. I wasn't able to show it on this recording, but the next application I'll make sure to show that. And as you can see, it's just a basic photo editor with all the features that you would think of. The reason why I'm wanting this is because I wanna have a photo editor on the go no matter what computer I'm on. The next application that we have is Cam Studio. Cam Studio is a screen record application that allows you to record your screen. And when the download happens, like I said, it just gives you a place to download and you click install and it's as simple as that. This should be lightweight enough to run on most computers as well. So that's another plus of this application. You're given a select variety of options on whether or not you want to record your entire screen, just a small portion, or just a complete window, as well as some other features including adjusting the frame rate, adjusting the resolution, and other things that I couldn't really do with other screen recording applications. Now we're going to be looking at Shotcut Portable. This might be the most important application I'm going to be downloading because it is a portable video editor that I should be able to use on any computer. Plus, it is free and open source, so I mean, there's no reason to not use it. That's like everything I go for. Here you can get a better look at the install process. Like I said, it was really simple, but I'm having no issues with these, so I'm really enjoying this. And Shotcut was having no issues whatsoever. I mean, I could definitely get used to this. It's definitely a different design than my current video editor, but I could get used to this and I could definitely edit a video on this. The next application that we're gonna be looking at is Linux Multimedia Studio, also known as LMMS. It is a music production application, which allows you to make music. I'm pretty sure from what I read, it's 8-bit and 16-bit music, which honestly is kind of cool. I kind of like that. So, I mean, it definitely interested me, so I thought I would give it a shot. Now, even though I don't know what I'm doing, I'm still trying to figure something out, and I still think it's working somewhat. I'll definitely have to watch tutorials if I really want to get good at this, but I mean... It's definitely something that I could have fun with. We're now going to be looking at our first portable game, which is going to be Assault Cube. Assault Cube looks like a early 2000s or late 90s first person shooter, which I really like. 
you're able to play online or with bots in single player, which is what I chose because I didn't want to create a count right now, but I mean, I definitely will. If there are people playing online, I would definitely love to play this game. You're given a huge variety of maps to play from and different game modes to play from, which is really cool and something I did not expect from this portable version. I was having a lot of fun and I really enjoy these old style shooters. It's probably the nostalgia of me playing games like this as a kid on my crappy Chromebook, but I just really like games like this. The next portable application that I was looking for was a portable web browser. I ended up choosing Firefox Portable, which from my research ended up probably being the best decision. A lot of these portable web browsers have security issues and lack certain things that the main version does, so Portable Firefox seems like the best bet. And honestly, it wasn't half bad. I was able to browse the web pretty perfectly. I mean, there was no issues whatsoever. I went on YouTube, looked at my own channel, viewed a video, and I mean, there was no issues with loading or any ads or anything like that. The last portable application that we're going to be looking at today is OpenOffice. OpenOffice is a free and open source office. It's basically Microsoft Office, but like I said, free and open source. It allows you to do everything that you would in Microsoft Office, and even the files that you create, you're allowed to open it in Microsoft Office and create changes as long as they're not massive changes that may not have the templates over on OpenOffice. It's an amazing application. I actually use it for my personal life because like I said, I do not like subscription-based services. And there's no issues with it. I mean, there are no differences between the portable version and the full version that I actually have downloaded on this computer. I was able to do basic writing on this document, as you can see. Even after everything was downloaded, we still have over 100 gigabytes of free space on this USB drive. All right, now I'm not gonna bore you guys with downloading years of photos from my personal life. So I'm not gonna do that today. I'll do that afterwards. But I just wanted to do what I really could with this USB. I wanted to make the most out of it. And like I said before, with not being able to have a home server here or really anything to be able to store anything, this is the best I can do. And so even though it may not be a home server by definition, it is still storing everything of my own, including photos, applications, as well as a little bit of games and, you know, video clips. I will be storing my, some of my videos on this because with transferring clips and stuff like that, with having to use my laptop to transfer to my computer, I don't have space in my OneDrive, so I'm not able to transfer clips just like that. So this will be very helpful when I'm able to transfer those clips. And it's USB 3.0, very nice. That was something that I was really looking for and I wasn't gonna get a flash drive without one. But the question I have for you guys today is what portable applications would you put on your USB given you had the chance? Anyways, that'll be it for this week's video. If you guys like this video, hit the like button down below and subscribe if you're new. I'll see you guys next week.